Well, all right. I think we might just turn that one into a song. I don't know. They, that's, that's, they do. Yeah, my little my, Joe is my little man crush. Yes, he is. Yeah, Joe's uh, my little man crush. So, uh, so we have a great week. We have a great show. Buddy Fitzpatrick is yes, here tonight. Yes, Buddy. Chris Johnson's here tonight. Amazing. Amazing show. And uh, and we had we had a, a great week, right? Yeah, we did. We, yeah, we did something we haven't done since uh, since March. Yeah, we went on an actual date. We had we took a fright. Yeah. 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 So just so you know, so during COVID, what we would do, and I know we're still in COVID, but during No, really, we're really not. Really, the hell of COVID, um, we would have our older children watch our youngest, and we would go drink beers in a marina. And we would sit and say, is it illegal to drink beers in the front seat of the truck? And we would say, eh, COVID. Yeah, we would, yeah. Just, <laughs> we would drink and drive. It didn't even matter. We'd just drive around a marina drinking and no one gave a shit. Yeah. yeah. A couple so. times I, I didn't have an opener and I actually got one from a Middletown cop. They're very nice. They're and, very lovely. Yeah. So we took we took Friday night off, yeah. which uh, and this is this is Vicky doesn't want to talk about this because uh, she said, well you, you, you tell too much. And, but we took Friday night off and we went out to dinner. Yeah, yeah we did. We got into a restaurant that we didn't think we were gonna get into. It's uh, there's been a big hubbub about a restaurant by us. And they've been in the papers a lot, and we got in, and they were in the paper a lot because. Well, I know it was a lovely experience. I don't think that we should talk about anything negative. No, no, it was great. It was fantastic. We went, we went, sir, to uh, restaurant Nicholas in Middletown. Fantastic, sir. I, I don't know why I'm, I'm talking to you. You would not like the place. The point is. <laughs> now, because you're too young, how old are you? Huh? How? Old? 16? 16. Let 16. me tell you something about the time we went to Popeye's. It was unbelievable. <laughs> so anyway, we went to Nicholas. And then, and Vicky said, listen, I just went one night away 
and she booked us at a hotel. And it wasn't a nice hotel because all the people that planned ahead like had good, you know, all the good hotels booked. So, but it was a hotel, and we yeah. were away. Yeah, and Vicky said, all I want to do is sit down and watch a full movie. We haven't watched a full movie in 15 years, and she told me how we never watch a full movie. So we put on, what was that movie? Bad Boys 2, and if you haven't watched it, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's also 24 years old. Anyway, <laughs> we put on Bad Boys 2, and Vicky makes exactly 18 minutes in the movie. She goes, I'm going to sleep. I'm like, I had a glass of wine, I was tired. Could have done that at home. Yeah, so, and then we, we picked up the next morning, watched a half hour more, and then I was like, I gotta go. Yeah. I, we still haven't finished it. So but, I have no idea. You know, <laughs> maybe next week. For all I know, they're still somewhere in Cuba in deep shit. Yeah, yeah, it's a great movie though. So, uh, and yeah. so, but I, it felt good just to go out and do. It felt normal, yeah. Right? Yeah, because we haven't done anything. Like these guys are out, they're out. They don't. They're... Well, you know what? I was, I was having the conversation um, with these guys before saying. Um, they're out all the time. Th I, they're here. Yeah. yeah and well, this I, is out. This... Yes, well, that's what I mean. I thought to myself, Boy, where are we gonna go? Because it rained out Friday night. Right. And I said, Oh, really? We can only go to the club, and I don't want to work. So what are we gonna do? Yeah, yeah. We should have worked. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> you went to sleep, and I just laid there in a hotel room, going, This is the worst hundred and twelve dollars <laughs> I've ever spent. Just laying there watching you sleep, and uh, but it felt normal. And I said, it, it felt good just to be able to do something. We can't afford to do anything now. No. Uh, and it reminded me of the time that we used to do fun stuff. And then, look who's here tonight. I know, Neil yeah. is here tonight. Our friend Neil is here tonight. And Neil, I did something really fun with. Uh, yeah. Neil, Neil is a, Neil's a pilot. Neil has a, a corporate jet that he flies around that he's in charge of. It's some other multi-millionaire's corporate jet. And Neil says to me one day, hey, you want to fly this guy's jet? I'm like, I don't think that that guy would like that because he's never going to know. And, and, we're, and Crystal, you got a picture? You got a picture for me? This is me flying, I think. It, it was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> I had a fly-by instrument only, apparently. We'll get it in a second. Neil, yeah, took me up, Neil took me up in a corporate jet, and I flew. How far did we fly, Neil? Yeah, around, around the ocean. We flew up the, right? And I said, Neil, I want to fly over my house. And I called Vicky. I said, Vicky, we're going to fly over the house, come out in the driveway. So I'm like, I don't know. We're like 400 feet up. I don't know. How, how high were we? 1,500 feet, 2,000 feet. You're the guy who's supposed to know. All I know is I'm driving. And OK, when you when you're fly a corporate jet, it's hard not to feel important. And I'm feeling really good. And Neil's just sitting there. And I'm, I'm steering. And I steer. And I see Vicky. And I'm waving. And she's out there, and she's waving, and I'm, I'm going over, and I'm going over, and, I'm, and all of a sudden I feel Neil's hand, and he pulls the plane back up. And I go, what's the matter? He goes, oh, nothing. He goes, just a, we were just about to crash, that's all. <laughs> that would definitely piss the guy off, Neil, if, they, if I crashed the jet, and they're like, who was driving? Vinny Brand, who? <laughs> I had a blast with you flying. That was a ton of fun. Uh -huh. Neil, and now he wants to, because Neil has a little plane, he always wants to fly me up to Connecticut. I'm sorry, I won't let him. No. <laughs> I, I say to Vinny all the time, Yeah. You I'm know? sorry, you have to go sit in three hours worth of traffic to get to work. I'm sorry, I'm not letting you go on a little plane. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is what she says to me. Neil's like, listen, we'll fly up. It's going to take 31 minutes. We'll land in Connecticut. You do your job. We'll fly home. And this is Vicky. I'm not going to have Don McLean write a song about you. You're... <laughs> Sing American Pie every time you invite me, which is why I can't go. All the all the excuses I give you, all because Vicky, does, she's not sure my life insurance had paid up. Yeah. If she knew it would paid up, she'd be like, go fly with Neil. No, I do feel bad, and I'm sure it's very safe. But I'm always like, no, Vinny, you know what? Six hours of traffic there and back isn't so bad. It's awful, but now that's so yeah, bad. Yeah, Connecticut sucks. So we have a big show tonight, and I'm dying to talk to Joe, right? Yes. Yes, Dying Joe and Joe. The, the Hungry Hound. Joe, introduce the band for me tonight. Yeah. Tell me. Tell All right. Me. Yeah, we have Alex Moravchek here on keys. We got Kai, Kai Gibson on the bass. We have Liam McGeary on the drums. Man, that, that 
That's the first time you ever hear a drummer get the biggest round of applause. Yeah, yeah. Ringo Starr doesn't get that. That kid's been handing out hits of ecstasy. Let me ask you. <laughs> so, so now the, the drummer is new, and of course Alex takes every other week off and goes down to North Carolina and hangs out. Where were you last week? I was just like Virginia. I don't know. You know what? I, this is why I smell some a little bit of BS because just earlier he said North Carolina, now it's Virginia. Or he said he was with his grandparents. He was visiting family, yeah. You were visiting family. Yeah. All right, well, try not to BS me. Just tell me you didn't feel like coming in. Joe, you got some good stuff for me? Yeah, man, we're going to have some fun tonight. Yeah, man, let's hear some good stuff. Let's hear Joe Coonan and the Hungry Hounds, everybody. <laughs> Play something delicious, Joe. All right, here's an original tune for you. Oh, don't look down.
That's amazing. That Thank is just you. amazing. Vinny, I don't know if you know, but Joe's parents are here with us again tonight. Uh, Joe's parents are yes. again with us here tonight. Yes. Hey, you're getting better and better. God yes, bless so you. so talented. Joe's so parents talented. told me earlier that they hope Joe gets a big deal and they don't ever have to work again. That would be nice. That would be nice. I mean, you yeah, put time in with a kid, you should get the, you know, reap yeah, the rewards. Good thing. Joe, fantastic. Thank you very yeah. much. Great. Yeah. yeah, unreal. We're back more with them. So, so you know, we were talking about, now we, we love this, right? Yeah. To, and right now, it's just, we're working with everybody. Yeah, we're having a good time. Yeah, we're meeting everybody. We've got everybody come in, and big stars keep coming in. And uh, I was, we were talking today about my favorite meet a big star moment. It's your favorite story. Uh, yeah, so when, as many of you know, Vinny and I met um, when I was in college. Oh my God, and stop beating that. <laughs> They get so, it. You're younger than yeah. me. They get so anyway, it. Anyway, because I didn't, I bought Vinny tickets to go see the Smother Brothers. All right, wait. At okay, Count first Basie of all, Theater. that's how young Vicky is. She doesn't even know the name. The Smother Brothers. No, it's the <laughs> Smothers Brothers. I'm first, close. first of all, when she bought the tickets, she goes, hey, "I bought you uh, tickets uh, for some comedians." from your generation. I'm like, whoa, pump the brakes. <laughs> okay, I'm not that old, that's number one. I, okay, I know who they are, and she knew I, you don't know who they are, right? Let me tell you something, young man, unbelievable. The Smother, <laughs> the Smothers Brothers. And, and so she got the tickets for me, and she just said to me, she goes, I'll go with you, but I don't want to, because I don't think they're gonna be funny. That's what she said to me. <laughs> So she got two tickets, and we saw them at the Count Basie. Yep, we saw them at the Count Basie. And, and how good were the Smothers Brothers? They, they were. They were very entertaining. It was a good, it was a good show. Very entertaining. You know what I'm <laughs> They were very humorous. They were phenomenal. If you, listen, you're too young. They were silk on silk, young man. They were just amazing. Funny as could be, smooth as could be. And during the show, she was howling because they're so good. And... Uh, and the show ends. Yeah, the show ends, and then Vinny says to me, I want to meet the Smothers Brothers. They're gonna, I'm going to go meet them. I'm going to go meet them. And I was like, what? And I was like, Vinny, you can't just go meet the Smothers Brothers. Like, and he's like, I'm Vinny Brand. I can go meet them. <laughs> and I was like, all right, dude. Knock yourself out. Yeah, and so now it, she kind of laid down a little challenge. She's like, you can't just go meet the Smothers Brothers. And I'm like, Vicky, the, the world of comedy is a tight-knit group. We respect one another. And if I want to meet the Smothers Brothers, I'm going to tell them Vinny Brand is here, and they're going to go, hey, bring him back here. So Vicky's like, you're going to make a jackass out of yourself. Yeah. So I go up to one of these gigantic stage guys, like, hey, uh, I'm Vinny Brand from the Stress Factory. I want to go say hi to the Smothers Brothers. And this one's going, I can't wait. I can't wait. They're going to come out here with two security guards, and you're going out the back door. And two minutes later, the guy comes up and goes, okay, come on back. They're going to meet you. Yeah, exactly. But, exactly. Hold because on. let me tell you something. When Vinnie Brand wants to meet somebody, <laughs> I get to meet him. All right? I, <laughs> but there's one thing. So I had stepped away for a second because I had said to myself, <laughs> you know what? When he asked, I'm just going to distance myself so it doesn't yeah, seem like we're together. Be part of the stand. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, I'm just going to stand back here. The bouncer did say something to Vinny. And Don't Vinny, tell him what they said. I'm not going to. Vinny nodded. Now, if anyone knows Vinny, he's 85% deaf. And so... <laughs> this, is, this is how you talk about me during the show. No. He's very yeah. old. He's no, deaf. No, no. He's but, from the Smother Brothers era. But if he can't hear you sometimes, he just nods along. And sometimes he nods along to the wrong thing. Go ahead, hon. A lot of your conversations with me... I'm not, a, you could be saying all kinds of stuff. I've had people say to me, you're a complete jackass. I'm like, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I, I nodded and the guy goes, well, come on back. And uh, now the count base. Well, so he says, come back. And now this is the look when he gives me. <laughs> I gave a very, a very uh, there to teach you yeah. who I am. And so we go back to meet the Smother brothers and we go into the basement of the Count Basie, and there's people everywhere, and they're over talking to their, to their road managers, this woman, and I see the woman point to me, and she says something to Tommy Smothers. All right, no, uh, yeah, Tommy. 
No, Dick Smothers. It doesn't matter. One of the brothers. It matters. <laughs> the Smothers brothers matter. So Dick Smothers comes over, and he sticks his hand out, and he goes, hi, I'm Dick Smothers. Did you enjoy the show? And I go, hey, man, I love the show. I'm shaking hands. That's fantastic. I'm so glad you got to meet us. That's, it's just great. What do you do? And I go, I'm, I, I'm a stand-up comic. Goes, oh, that's fantastic. And now Tommy Smothers walks up, and he goes, Tommy, this is Vinny Brand, and this is Vicky, and Vinny's a comic. And Tommy Smothers shakes my hand. He's going, oh, that's fantastic. I'm like, hey, thank you very much. I, and now I'm looking at her, and she's looking at me like, something's just a bit just a bit weird with how the Smothers Brothers are talking, but she doesn't know. They're much older, according to her, so she doesn't know. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, it's great. And he goes, oh, you're a comic. Oh, yeah, I'm a comic. I go, actually, I own a comedy club. And Tommy Smothers goes, oh, Dick, he owns a comedy club. And Dick Smothers goes, wow, that's just fantastic. That's great. I'm like, these guys are a little wacky, right? And I go, you know, listen, I know it's stupid, but I would love for you guys to come play. I go, everybody works there. I mean, we've had Ray Romano, Chris Rock, we've had everybody, and I start naming names. And he's going, oh, they all work for you. Yeah, they all work, that's great. I go, listen, it's in New Brunswick. I know you play the State Theater a lot, but I'm telling you, this club is gonna remind you of the club in LA that I'm planking on, where John Lennon heckled you and got thrown out. And now I see Dick's mothers go, wait, you, you own a comedy club? Yeah, I own a comedy club. It's called the Stress Factory. I'm Vinny, I own a club. And now I'm talking to him a lot, and I see his face go from very, what would you call it? Very uh, sincere. Yeah, and a light went on in his head. A light. And he goes, mm. oh, well, okay. Yeah, well, thanks very much. Uh, we, we really don't do clubs anymore. It's nice to meet you. And they walk away, like, abruptly. Abruptly. And I look at Vicky, and I go, oh my God, I think, I think I insulted the Smothers Brothers by asking them to do a club. And now they're over there talking to their road manager, and there's a lot of going on. There's a lot of arm movement, and all of a sudden she peels off and she comes up and she goes, oh, I'm so glad that you got to meet them. There's been a little confusion. Uh, we were expecting someone else. So what she said was, is they were actually expecting a mentally disabled boy who had written a letter in. The bouncer had said, are you the mentally disabled boy that wrote the letter? And Vinny had said, yes. So. The bouncer said, are you mentally disabled? Yes, I am mentally disabled. So it teach Vinny to maybe try to read some lips when people are talking. So now, Vicky, okay, because now I've been outed, and now I have to do a walk of shame. When Vicky hears that, she goes, ah, they thought we're <laughs> mentally disabled. And the whole room looks at me, and I'm like, I gotta run out of here. Yeah. And we run out, and the bouncer's like, you shouldn't have done that. I'm like, hey, I'm out. They thought I was a boy, I'm happy. <laughs> that was our meeting the smothers, yeah. famous meeting the smothers brother story. She was as happy as she could be. Yeah. I thought, that's a fun story. We got a lot of show. You guys ready yeah, for our show? Don't... We're so excited for our show tonight. Oh my God, what a great show. So, uh, so a couple things, and then we're gonna get go. So first of all, I want you to do me a favor. If you're watching at home, I want you to make sure you share the video. That's important for us. You people in the studio audience, thank you for coming out. Just so you know how it's gonna run. This show is gonna end at nine, but your night does not end at nine, ma'am. Your night ends much later. Well, they're out for their big anniversary tonight, so oh. hopefully, Hopefully they'll stay up and get through all the bad boys too. Oh, hey, do you want to know something? He's got a shirt that says, I love my hot Trinidadian wife. Aw, how cute is that? Gosh. How many years is it? Uh, one. One, one, I think you should know that. Everybody think, wears I think, it. Listen. I think one, one should pop right into your head. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I don't know. Why yeah. don't you come back with that shirt on 15 years from now, then you'll impress me. Yeah. Or 25. 15 years yeah. now, it's gonna say, I'm trapped, please help me. <laughs> Good for you, 15, you just married one year. God bless you, now which one of you married the other to become a citizen? <laughs> <laughs> I 
should say, I love my passport. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Live the dream, sir. Live the dream. You guys, give him a big round of applause for one year anniversary. <laughs> We got more show, and I'm very excited to bring this guy to stage. This guy, uh, do you have a microphone, Chris? Do you have your own microphone? Where are you? Where is Chris? Oh, good. Thank you. This guy uh, tours all over the world, really, right, Chris? All over the world, uh, working with uh, the Impractical Jokers. And uh, yeah, he's, he's one of the best comics in New York City, a very good friend of ours here at the club. Please welcome our good friend, Chris Johnson, everybody. I'm here. Yes! Give it up, give it up, everybody. One more time. Make sure you keep your energy high. Have fun, we're gonna have fun. The more fun you have, the more fun we're gonna have. Keep it going for Vicky and Vinny one more time. Make some noise, what do you think, what do you think? Vinny did about right, didn't he? I think he's out, she's out of his league, isn't he? Pitch a big ten, you get a hot wife. That's what happens, I guess. <laughs> but um, all right. Um, there we go, we're on key. How are you guys all doing? This is awesome, man. This is great. This is unbelievable. This is the nicest tent I've performed in in a long time. <laughs> this is a tough, 2020 is a tough time for comedians. We've done a lot of things that we're not proud of, man. I've done shows for cars and parking lots where they beat the horn for laughter. I've done Zoom comedy shows. I stood on a retainer wall of somebody's guy's yard. Like, I feel like I'm gonna have to explain myself to my children at some point, like, when they're gonna find out what I did, and I'm gonna be like, like I was a prostitute or like a male stripper. Like guys, I did a lot of things I'm not proud of. I'm sorry, I had to put food on the table. So, but this is good. I drove all the way up from the Jersey Shore for this. Everybody, yeah. Yeah, I'm unemployed. I had a call with my, uh, with the lady that handles my claims. There's nothing more awkward than having a call for unemployment while you're at the beach, right? And I'm like, hello? And they're like, I'm the Department of New Jersey Labor. And I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I'll take two more white claws. Anybody else need anything? I got unemployment on the phone. I'm good. I think we're getting that extension. <laughs> but I drove all the way back up here for this show and sat in about 16 hours of traffic um, on a Sunday coming up north. But, you know, it's all right. It, it, there was a guy behind me the entire time. I could see his frustration. Every time I hit the brakes, he was freaking out, look, doing this shit to me. And I'm like, everyone else is doing it. What's the problem, right? And we're all from New Jersey, right? And unless anybody is not quarantining anybody. <laughs> you guys deal with road rage, we'll deal with traffic a lot around it, yes? Make some, yeah, come on, guys, get with it. Yes, yes. We know you do, we know you do. You probably sat in a mile of traffic getting in this lot. I'm too old to be fighting people on the road, okay? I, 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 people are crazy, they got weapons. So what I do is I try to defuse the situation. So this is what I do, try this out. This is gonna sound absolutely crazy and absurd, but I swear to God, I swear, I swear to God I do this. I drive around with a six inch Caucasian dildo under my front seat. Swear to God, swear to God, swear to God. And when people on the road get mad and start giving me the finger and cursing and screaming, right? I pull this thing out, right? Hanging out the window. You gotta see the looks on people's faces. It diffuses the situation immediately, immediately. People go from pissed off to just total confusion. It's like, I got a dildo, I think he's got a dildo. It's great, I'm telling you, it's great. If you got kids, it's fun for the whole family, try it. I'm <laughs> I got a three-year-old and a five-year-old. My kids love it when they're in the car, but they think it's the greatest thing in the world, right? As soon as somebody beeps the horn, my kids get all jacked up. They're like, Dad, is that for us? Are you gonna pull out the big finger on him, Daddy? Can I hold it, Daddy? Can I hold it? My daughter's the elder and more responsible. She typically holds it for me. <laughs> it's great, I'm telling you, man. I'm, I'm all for equality. I see you sitting there. I'm sorry, you can't. I don't want to get awkward, but you can't use a black dildo, people are gonna think you got a shotgun hanging out the window, right? Gonna have to paint the tip orange. It's gonna get weird for everybody. You might poke somebody across the street in the eye and cause a pile up. If you're gonna try, you're looking at me now like, I gotta try it, I, got, I gotta get a dildo. I gotta get another dildo. <laughs> right, maybe one for the car, one for the nightstand, maybe one for the garage by the drill. I don't know what you guys are into. She's hot Trin Trinidadian, right, if you say it. If you're gonna try it, it does work, okay? All right, guys, but it's not foolproof, it can backfire on you, all right? Backfired on me recently. I was on the parkway. This guy was getting a little close, getting aggressive, beeping the horn, so I had it out. Had it out the window. I was tapping a side view mirror and shit, right? And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't notice 
uh, the rainbow sticker in his back window. He got up extra close. He pulled out a nine inch. I was like, ah! He had the upgraded hands-free device, right, ladies, with the suction cup? <laughs> he just held it out the window and poof, suctioned it to the roof and chased me around like a shark. It's like, da -dum, da -dum, baby shark. Da -da 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 -da. My, uh, <laughs> it's true, it's in my car. I get behind this fake brick wall out right there. My wife was in the car with me the other day. She's like, that thing that you say on stage, this is just for the stage. You don't really have that in here, do you? I was like, no, 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 I got it right here, right? I pulled it out from under the seat. I took it out of the bag. I always leave it in a plastic bag because I don't want to get lint on it, right, ladies? That's disgusting. And, she, <laughs> and she's like, what the hell is wrong with you? But I tell you what, ever since that day, anytime she wants to run errands, she's like, hey, do you mind if I borrow your car to go grocery shopping? <laughs> <laughs> Who's married? Make some noise, married people in here. Make some noise. Yes. Still hanging in strong after quarantining for like six months together. You just gotta know. You guys married? You guys married a long time. You knew going into the marriage that she was gonna be in charge, right? You can tell by the ring. Like you got a beautiful diamond ring on it. So look at it, bling, my eyes. And yours is a piece of shit. Looks like a washer or something, right? Cutting off the circulation to your neck right now. That's how my wife's ring was. A lot of work for a man, right? For men, you got, a, you got a lot of haggling with some Persian dude at the Woodbridge Jewelry Exchange. And <laughs> my, ring, my wife's ring was expensive, platinum gold, diamonds. My ring came free with the purchase of her rings. I swear to God. The box her ring came in is worth more than my ring. I swear to God, the box her ring came in had this giant bow. You open up the bow and the box folds open, right? And the spritz of the scent of lavender shot out at her, and then a friggin' midget on an elevator came out and handed her the ring, right? <laughs> Did you get the insurance on the ring? Gotta get the insurance, right? Just for shits and giggles, I asked the jewelry guy, I was like, hey, you think maybe I should think about getting my ring insured also? He laughed, and you know what he did? He reached under the counter and grabbed a handful of the same ring, said, here's a couple extra, just in case. Sprinkle some around the house, perhaps the workplace. Put them in that little pocket next to your Cialis. I got a, this is how worthless I am in a marriage. I got one of these Enso rings. Anybody got one of these? It's like a squishy silicone rubber faucet gasket type thing, right? It's like, it's like the roll down bottom to a condom if you pop the body off, right? $14 on a coupon code this thing was. This is how worthless I am. My wife who picked out the ring for me, FaceTimed me when I was on the road when we were doing comedy and shit a long time ago. And she was like, hey, it looks like you conveniently forgot your wedding ring on the kitchen counter again. I was like, no, I didn't. I have it right here. And she goes, well, what's this? I'm like, uh, that's the rubber band that was wrapped around the broccoli you made for dinner last night, asshole. <laughs> she was like, you mean the broccoli you didn't even eat? I'm like, you can't win. You can't win, right? <laughs> Anybody been arguing? You guys been, have you been getting along? Or you have any fights? Weird fights. We get into weird fights. Me and my wife got, you know the weird fights we've been getting into because we've been tight together for so long? Now, uh, during this quarantine, we, we were getting ready to go out. We were gonna have, we had a beautiful evening plan. We were getting dressed nice. We were gonna go to Costco because Instacart kept substituting incorrectly. <laughs> and uh, I took a shower, got dressed nice, went downstairs, put on the TV, figured I could probably watch like six movies by the time she gets out of the shower and is ready. So she jumps in the shower and comes down almost immediately, right? Comes downstairs, butt naked, totally nude, right? Stood right in front of, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Stood right in front of the TV holding a towel. And she goes, which towel did you use in the shower? And I'm like, I don't know, probably the one that's currently wet. I have no idea. And she goes, well, whose hook did you take the towel off of? And I'm like, I gotta be honest. I, I, I never knew we had assigned hooks in this whole relationship we've been in. She goes, do you think it's okay to just be using my towel? That's disgusting and gross, right? Yeah, and then she pff, might drop the wet towel on the floor and goes, don't use my towel again and walked her naked ass back upstairs. And it took a second for it to for me to realize what happened, and then I got mad. I was like, whoa, 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 don't just be coming down here, mic dropping wet towels on me like I got served. So I said to her, I said, hey, if you're not happy with my choice of towel, you're gonna be really pissed off when you find out which razor blade and toothbrush I just used, right? <laughs> and I said that shit right to her face in my mind. I didn't really go upstairs, I kinda <laughs> stayed downstairs, said it real low. <laughs> She's crazy, man. She's a neat freak, my wife, man. Like, she's cleaning the house constantly. I'm like, who cares? We live in here together. It's not a problem. Like, we had, she, like, if we have company coming over, like, there's touch-up paint vault, excess clutter from the living room is stuffed into the trunks of our cars. Last year, we had friends over for New Year's. Yeah. <laughs> Last year for New Year's, we had friends over, right? And I caught her upstairs cleaning the bathroom tub. And I'm like, who's taking a bath at this party? I mean, are people gonna be taking a bath? Are we stepping up our relationship to some swinger level stuff? Because if we are, I'm gonna have to manscape, so you might as well hold off cleaning until I'm done anyway, right? 
You still manscaped, dude, or no? You look like you got a lot of manscaping, dude. <laughs> I gave up two years of the marriage. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'll still trim the hedges if you can't see through the windows, but I'm not getting crazy. Like, if my wife wants to get it on nowadays, it's like the movie Feel the Dreams. My boner just creeps out of the cornfields like Ray Liotta, and she says, hey, honey, want to have a catch? We're big Disney fans. Any Disney fans here? Disney fans? I love Disney, man. We very nostalgic for me. My wife loved Disney. Um, so it was good to see it opening back up again after all this. We want to go back. I don't know if I can wear a mask in August there, but um, we want to go back. Not too long after having our first baby a couple long ago, my wife goes, hey, I want to go to Disney. And I was like, this is great. I need a vacation after dealing with you for nine months. I was like, but do you feel comfortable leaving this baby with somebody already? Because we just got this baby. And she's like, no, I want to take the baby to Disney so we get pictures of the baby with the mouse and shit. And immediately I'm like, oh, this no longer sounds like a whole lot of fun <laughs> for you because you're gonna get stuck watching the baby while I'm on all the rides because I'm not going to Disney and not going on Space Mountain because she's an idiot, right? She's like, look, I want to go and I want to stay at the Animal Kingdom Lodge Resort. It's supposed to be amazing and beautiful, right? The views are breathtaking. There's animals walking around right outside the room. It's a little expensive. She says it's like $500 a night. I'm like, $500 a night? Can't afford that shit. I'm performing in an alleyway in a tent outside of a parking garage. <laughs> On a Sunday? <laughs> How about for $32.50 a night, we can stay at the Econo Lodge Resort and we can see animals walking around right there in the hotel room with us, right? <laughs> Scurrying behind the curtains and the pillows and shit. We did, we stayed at the Animal Kingdom Resort. Anybody ever stay? It's beautiful, right? It's amazing. Animals, exotic animals walking around right outside the room. Do you know what, you wanna know what animal my kids were the most excited to see that first morning? They woke up early, they looked over the balcony, you're like, Dad, Dad, wake up. Come here, Dad, come here. It's a squirrel. <laughs> squirrel, just like the ones in our, in our yard at home, Dad. I'm like, yep, just like the freak goddamn ones in our yard at home. <laughs> we did the character breakfast. Anybody ever do a character breakfast? $250, right? For, it's, a, it's great. It's a great, great uh, deal. $250 for a family of four. And it's essentially the same thing as a free continental breakfast at any hotel, <laughs> except the waffles are shaped like Mickey heads and the characters come around to your table while you're eating and scare the living shit out of your children, right? Yeah. Mickey came out, he was nine feet tall. My kids choked me out, clutching me in fear, crying, dripping a constant flow of snot in my food. My son just clutched his, he was hyperventilating, clutching his Mickey waffle, just dripping a flow of syrup into my flip-flop. You know how messed up your day's gonna be in Florida in August when you're walking around a theme park with a flip-flop full of syrup? Just sound like a trotting thoroughbred. Every giant Floridian creature's flocking to your feet, right? Those palmetto bugs. We're from Jersey. Ever have a Floridian lie to you about that? You're like, oh, roach. Like, that's just a palmetto bug. You're like, oh, rat. And they're like, no, that's a sun kitten. I'll get the leash. <laughs> right, it's like Kong Island. Everything is bigger in Florida except for the IQs, right? <laughs> hey, guys, my name is Chris Johnson. You guys are awesome. You guys are great. You got a great headliner coming. Keep it going for Vinny and Vicky. And give it up for your bar staff. They're awesome. Put your hands together for Chris Johnson. I gave Vicky the clean microphone. Uh, and I'm not nervous about Chris with COVID. I'm nervous about Chris long before COVID. So, uh, so we, uh, now our new backdrop came in, Vicky. You didn't even notice it. I did notice it. You did, did. notice it, right? I yeah. did. It's mm -hmm. very nice. And I it did. takes a lot of work to get that shit done. Yeah, and we got these new Our uh, new masks and our masks. new... Our new thong underwear, yeah. Vicky Vinny thong yeah. underwear. So, uh, so we have a lot going on. And uh, I got to talk to Joe again because we got big stuff going on, right? Yeah, Joe has yeah. big stuff. And, and I'll tell you something. So when we started doing the show, it was right. inside with mm -hmm. no audience at all, right. right? And just a couple just telling stories to nobody. Mm -hmm. and, and then we met Joe. And then Joe brought in Alex, and Al it just keeps getting better and better. But these guys... Oh, Alex was there the first night, wasn't he out there? Yeah, Alex was there the first night with Joe, Ben. Yeah. Yes? That's right, yeah. You were here the whole time, Alex. You missed last week, as I recall. <laughs> Don't tell me you've been the whole time. I've done every show, Alex. Every show. <laughs> you took a week off. Vicky took a week off. Joe and I work our asses off, right or wrong, brother. <laughs> Not wrong. Every week. Now, Joe, you got some big stuff coming. You got a brand new album coming out, right? 
That's right, man. It's in the works, yeah. So, Joe. Joe, I want... I'm going to say this right now. I want to do a release party here at the, at the venue. We did? Let's do it. Yeah. I would do that, Joe. I would do a release party for you. This guy's not clapping. He's not impressed, Joe. He's not... So listen, That's all right. How, when is the album going to be ready? Well, the album is getting mastered, right, as we speak. Uh, we're going to be releasing a single first. So uh, I would love to do a single release party here at some point. You know, Joe, I'm very excited, and I think do, when we do the release, I can do all the talking, because every time I talk to you, it sounds like you just woke up. <laughs> this, this is Joe talking about a new album. Well, you know, ah, right now, they're mastering it, but I'm exhausted. I'm just trying to stay in the flow, brother, you know? Now, you weren't ready to talk, you weren't ready, and, uh, but I, I love it. And it, at the end of this, I want you to know something. At the end of the show, Joe and the Hungry Hounds are going to play. And I tell every audience, get a couple dollars together and drop it in the tip cup because these guys play for next to nothing. Our whole crew yeah. works for next Everybody to nothing. Everybody works so hard. And they're yeah. fantastic. And, uh, and by the way, tonight I want to hear maybe just one drum solo, a bass solo, and a, a guitar solo, and then a piano solo. Later on, I want to hear like one of everything, right? All right, good. You guys ready for more show? Let me hear you loud and clear. I'm gonna tell you something right now. Uh, I'm really happy to bring our next comic to stage, right? Oh, one of our faves. One, one of, of our, our favorites, faves. right? Yeah. Get your, get your microphone on. I don't know how to move it. I'm just picking it up. I don't know. It's fine. Sometimes you really look like a rookie, but you're so good at it. I get no annoyed because people like you more than me. And that but, is so not true, Vinny. You just keep saying it. Though, no, over it is and over definitely again. true. I'm so tired of hearing from people. So listen to me. Yeah. Our next comic, another great friend of ours, uh, he has a very hot album, I guess you call it. Yep. on Dry Bar Comedy, mm -hmm. where he did a special, one hour special. If you haven't seen that, download Buddy Fitzpatrick on Dry Bar Comedy. Please welcome to stage our good friend, the one and only Buddy Fitzpatrick, Buddy! everybody. Hey guys, they could be my grandkids. <laughs> Listen, I've done a lot of Zoom in the last few months, so if everyone could not laugh, that would make me feel right at home. <laughs> uh, in about five minutes, I need someone over there to go, is he on, is he talking? <laughs> if anyone has a dog here, I needed to start barking over there. Someone could be fuddling in the kitchen over there going, who wants scrambled eggs? This is what I've been used to for the last so I thank the Stress Factory for making live comedy. And I want to thank Vicky as well, because I like her better. So um, thank you, Vicky. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm still not used to walking around with this, this thing. What is it, the mask? I have Freudian dreams where I walk into places without the mask on. Remember Freudian dreams were like without pants, you walk into school? I, I have them with ma masks. Do you ever walk into a place without a mask? They look at you like you're Hitler. Oh my God, you're killing us! Okay, I've been wearing pants my whole life. That's why I don't forget them. I've been dealing with a mask for about three and a half months. Is there some like grace period where I'm allowed to start forgetting it? Half of you are gonna forget it on the way to the bathroom and go, fuck, and then walk, turn around and walk back again. It's just gonna happen. It's just gonna happen. Uh, I hate watching the news. Uh, the way it's set up where nobody's in a room anymore, I hate that, it's, it sucks, you know? It's like that Zoom look that just, I'm done with that, you know? Hey Bob, you're in San Francisco where there's a lot of uh, wildfires and you're talking to a family whose house burnt down and they can't find their pets. Can you tell us more? Yeah, that's right, but what the hell was that? What, what? I don't care if they ever find their pets now. I, 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 I lost interest. People always coming at you like, like they're gonna hit you. Hey, it's like I'm gonna be in a fight. Getting old, but I met somebody. Who meets somebody in a pandemic? I met somebody, yeah, I know. And 
and uh, it's pretty cool. She's lovely. She's beautiful. She's 26 years uh, younger than I am. So, uh, isn't that unbelievable? That is, that's crazy. But she's got a lot to learn. Like after watching a movie, do it together for two hours on the sofa, and when it's over, you know, I go, oh, "Hey, that was great. It was fantastic." And I stand up and go. Ow. And she goes, oh my God, what'd you do? Nothing, just stood up <laughs> after two hours. You learn this shit, baby, come on, get on it. It's 10 o'clock at night, you, and she goes, you want ice cream? Okay, can we talk? All right, unless you want a disaster tonight in bed. <laughs> Don't ever ask me if I want ice cream. I can eat ice cream in a certain period of time during the day. It's usually from 3.30 till about five minutes later. And then now I'm cut off. I can't. It's, I got to get in that window with ice cream. I fell the other day. I had never felt so old in my life when I fell. <laughs> Nothing reminds you that you shouldn't fall when you're a certain age and then you fall. And I fell in New York. And, and when, when you're old and you fall, your first thought is, oh my God, I, I, I hope somebody saw me. When you're young, it's, oh my God, I hope nobody saw me. When you're old, it's, oh my God, I hope somebody saw me. I needed help getting up, but it was New York. You know, everybody was like, whatever. They just walked over, and they, you know what I mean? So I got coffee, because you know, there was money on my back. So it all worked out. All worked out. The, the, I do notice that the older I get, the gayer I look, the more the gay guys, more, gay, more and more gay guys hit on me, and, and they insist that I'm gay. And I don't care that they think I'm gay, but it bothers me that they insist I'm gay when I tell them I'm not. Like I'm wrong. Like I'm mistaken. There's this guy at this resort that I play all the time. Every time I come off the stage, he's like, you ready? You come into the dark side. And one time he actually said to me, you know, one night with me and you'd be gay. And I said, really, is that how it works? Okay, so. <laughs> if you slept with a woman, you'd be straight? Is that what you're saying? And he goes, oh, no, 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 no. I was born this way. I said, no, you weren't. You were born gay, but you weren't born this way, <laughs> okay? <laughs> That's the choice right there, okay? No baby ever came out of the womb. Wah, wah. <laughs> oh my God, I'm never going through that thing again. Ugh. See, you have to be careful though, right? Nowadays, you have to be very careful because it's not, it's not the word you use because it used, to, it used to be the context in that you used it. It's not like that anymore. You can't use words because it's, you're told not to use the word doesn't, the, the, the hell with the context, you know? I have a 22-year-old daughter and a 20-year-old daughter and I, I'm, I'm constantly being told you can't say words like that anymore. Dad, I took my 22-year-old daughter for a drink. She looks at the menu and she goes, what's a Mai Tai? I said, it's a fruity drink. And she goes, Dad, you can't use words like that. <laughs> I said, what are you, retarded? <laughs> she had no idea what that meant. <laughs> what's that mean? She's, Joe, she does sound a little bit like you, Joe. Joe, I'm talking about. She does. There, it is that, Vinny's right, it's that lazy. You guys are lazy, you're so lazy. They're, kids that, how old are you, Joe, may I ask? 21. 21, okay, right. So you're in between my daughters and I don't want any dirty jokes about that. But um, I'm a 20 year old, 22, they're, they're lazy. They're so lazy, their mouth doesn't move. You don't use your, you know. My daughter will say to me, I got that, thanks, got anything? There's this guy, anything? He's like, oh, I got a lot of hair. Like, I can't really love my hair and everything. Yeah, I really love your hair and everything. He had a gun with her in the refrigerator. It's like, oh my God, where'd you get that? It's like Target. It's like, oh God, I speak Target. He's like, yeah, I feel. And I go, who has a gun with a ferret in a refrigerator? Is that, did I hear that right? What? Why would somebody have a gun with a ferret? All right. I'm surprised you guys are on your, on your phone right now, but you're working, right? You're working. It's cool that you don't... Every time I sit down to dinner with my daughters, the phone comes out. Like, they might miss something, or it just has to be there. They might have to look up something. I grew up in the 70s. That would be like us bringing encyclopedias no matter where we went. <laughs> you don't even know what encyclopedias are, do you? It's amazing.
It were these like tomes of, uh, from A to D would be this big, right? You walk in, we would walk in, like that would be like walking into a restaurant, just plopping it down on the table. Poof, hey everybody, yeah, I'm here, I'm sorry I'm late, man. What are we talking about, mountains? Let's look some up. <laughs> M, okay, poof, got it, this thing's amazing. My kids always take pictures of me with that live photo where they take a picture and then you press it and everybody moves for like two seconds. I call bullshit on that. I hate that. I always look like I'm on drunks or stupid or in it. I don't know. It's like. <laughs> what is that for? It's to make me look like an idiot. That's all it's for. Siri never understands me, so they make it safe that you can text free, hands-free in the car, which is more dangerous than just grabbing the phone, texting real fast, and throwing it down while you're driving. Do you ever try hands-free texting in the car? Oh my God, it takes me a half an hour to do a three-second text. I wanna send a message to Paul. What would you like your message to Paul to say? <laughs> hey, hey man, heard you were in an accident and you're in a wheelchair. Give me a call when you get a chance. Your message to Paul says, hey, gay man. There we go. Heard you were in an accident on a Ferris wheel. Give me a call when you want to prance. What? Ready to send it? No, change it. I can do that. Half an hour later, I'm up on the curb. I'm taking lampposts out. I said wheelchair! It's exhausting. There's always a moment, there's always like the one message where I'm like so tired, just send, I don't give a shit, let him figure it out. <laughs> Ready to send it? Yeah, let him figure it out, just get it out of my car. Your message to Paul says, hey, hey man, heard you were in an accident and you're in a wheelchair. Care to dance? <laughs> Ready to send it? Yeah, send it, go ahead, just send it. <laughs> you know, guy's in a wheelchair, I'm asking him to dance. Then I get a message 20 minutes later from Paul. Duck stew, glass bowl. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, nice to be here. Nice to be halfway. That's, it's remarkable. It really is, it's remarkable. I mean, I haven't worked up. I think the last time I was on stage was like towards the end of March. So this is, this is sort of like a rehearsal. You're watching me rehearse. If I forget something, just let it go. Pretend that it didn't happen. I'll say, it's take two. Take two. I'm gonna get a, I think I'm gonna get a new car. I'm getting sick of my car. It's a cheap Nissan. It's like the, whatever it is. I don't know, it's, it's, it hydroplanes. It's not even raining in a hydroplane. So it's, such a cheap, it's, such a cheap, it's got the baby horn, so it never tells the other drivers how pissed off I am. You know, so when I, you know what I mean? Hey, Rambo! <laughs> there are people on a highway going, oh my God, there's a baby out there somewhere <laughs> in need of help. They should make cars with like 10 horn sounds around the wheel so you can choose the sound you need depending on the situation that you're in. Right, we be a lot more polite. Somebody tries to cut you off, you know, you're like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. You're at a light, the light turns green, the guy in front of you is just sitting there. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> See somebody walking, they stumble and fall. <laughs> <laughs> that was me falling. Good, you called me back. What's that say? I love my hot Trinidad. Trinidadian, I can't even, I, it's been, it's, I blame everything on COVID. I don't know that word, it's COVID. My hot Trinidadian wife, oh wow, that's lovely. That's so nice. It's a shame though, she makes you wear that. <laughs> you must trust him. How long have you been married? Did we cover this? You were yeah. one year tonight. That's awesome, congratulations. I think that's amazing. This was the first time, this was the first time you had to spend this much time together? Yeah, yeah, how'd it go? You're still here, you're out here, you're, yeah. And you're wearing that, cause she, she bought it for you. Um, what, how did it go? How was the staying in the... Okay, I swear to God, he went like this. I swear to God. And she went, not bad. 
That's typical, isn't it? Isn't marriage like having a cat, but you're constantly pissed off at the cat for not acting like a dog? <laughs> What's that? I'm single? Yes, but I was married for 23 years, so I do know what I'm... That's why I'm single. That's probably true. I'm getting back, I'm trying to get used to it again. I'm trying, I'm dating somebody normal now. Somebody, dating somebody normal until, you know, she rips her mask off. But, but dating somebody, I'm always waiting, yeah. Dating somebody normal is, uh, it always reminds you of how dysfunctional everything was before. You know what I mean, little things. Like I get nervous when I'm driving with her because w w when I was with my ex-wife, I'd be driving, you know, I'd be in New York, I couldn't find a, a parking space, you know. And, She'd be like, what about that one over there? Oh, really? You know what? Just drive. Ugh. All she said was, wow, this is... My girlfriend's like, well, this is crazy, but we'll find a space. I'm like, oh my God. I forget your name, but will you marry me? Oh my God. My name is Buddy Fitzpatrick. Thank you so much for coming out and enjoying the show. And I hope to see you guys real soon. Thanks so much to the Stress Factory. Together for Buddy Fitzpatrick. Awesome. Oh my God, that yeah. was so much fun. So much fun, right? Yeah, it it's was a, a good fast time. hour, Vicky. It is so quick. It so goes so fast. And yeah. you're always off somewhere. I always have to get you. Yeah, I, I, I was forget. I was on the phone. I was you wander, you wander. I did wander. Cool. You ready to do it? So uh, next week, uh, are we off next week? Because next yes, week? next week we're going to be off for Labor Day. Um, right. And then we'll be back the following week because we're gonna be we're gonna revamp a couple things. We're gonna come back stronger and better. Every every week we just keep trying and trying harder. Yeah, keep getting better. Yeah. So, so I need I need all of you to do me a favor. This is very important. Number one. So I really want you to, to do us a favor. Go home and share the video. That's important for us. We started doing this for people that were afraid to go out. All right. Uh, older people, like yourself, sir, that were <laughs> afraid to go out, and now he doesn't, get, he doesn't care at all. He's no, got, he's here. Yeah, he's got 12 comorbidities. He doesn't give a shit. Yeah. And, and so now, here we are uh, in week whatever it is. Yeah, I don't even know anymore. we want you to share the video for us. Now, for you people at home, thank you for watching. Please share it. And if you need to get a hold of us, 908 Do not give you, He gives out his phone number all the time. Except then he answers it and goes, who? Who is this? What do you want? I'm Don't like, why do you give out your number? Why, if you're gonna answer that way? Or then he'll be like, Vicky, I can't hear them. You talk to them. And now suddenly, whatever it is that you're calling for, you're talking to me. So. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you have a lot of complaints. I think soon, <laughs> it's just gonna be the Vicky show. I think you're gonna dump me. Anyway, uh, so. 908-601-6976. Just don't text me. There's 875 unread texts on my phone right now. We are going to end this show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Studio Wayne, Thank for hanging you. out. How about a big round of applause for our friend Chris Johnson, everybody. Buddy Fitzpatrick, everybody. Did I forget you, Buddy Vicky? Yeah, Joe, tune in the end. Joe Cooley and the Hungry Hound, everybody! Hey, thank you to our staff for working so damn hard. Yeah. All the credits, listen to Joe and the Hungry Hound. Light it up, boys! Thank you.
escape.